Hello, this is Les. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to uh, demonstrate a little engine that I designed that is in between my uh, single acting, single cylinder uh, little engine that has a quarter inch bore and a quarter inch stroke and this other little engine which is a single cylinder double acting engine which has a quarter inch bore and a quarter inch stroke but it's double acting so it uses twice as much steam per revolution it has a power stroke on on the down and a power stroke on the upward side of the piston upward movement of the piston where this little engine right here, single acting, um, it has a connecting rod and piston like a, uh, a typical um, internal combustion engine with a wrist pin and a connecting rod in the piston open on the bottom side of the cylinder so it, it only has a, a power stroke on the downward movement of the piston. This little engine that I designed and built more recently is, I say it's in between these two because it is a double acting engine. In other words, power stroke on the downward movement of the piston and on the upward movement of the piston. But it's, uh, it has a quarter inch bore and only a 3 8 inch stroke so it has a little bit smaller crankshaft and a little bit shorter profile than this engine and as you can see I also made it a poster style engine so it has the four posts and uh, kind of more of a match of the little uh, single cylinder single acting engine so this one has it uses about 50 percent more steam per uh, revolution than this one right here I also designed the flywheel to be on the on the back side of the engine and it's it has the the shaft coupler built into it uh, these all these little engines are were designed for miniature model steamboats so um, this this has a nice low profile uh, which is nice for steamboats so you can uh, have the shaft running out close to the bottom of the hull and uh, let's see Oh yeah, all of these engines can be disassembled. Um, the uh, the connecting rod is split on the bottom, and it's uh, pinched shut over the the crankshaft. But you can get in there with a little screwdriver, and you can you can pry it open and take it off. There's a little tiny wrist pin. Uh, in the the top of the connecting rod right there that has little tiny uh, pieces of copper ring that are squeezed into grooves on the pin so that can be removed and when that's removed uh, the piston can be removed up through the top um, and then of course if you take the frame apart you can get the connect you can get the uh, the crankshaft out and you can take the connecting rod off. The uh, piston head is just a kind of a tight fit. Um, so the little cap is made and it's pushed in there finger tight. But the engines only run on about three to five PSI of pressure. So there's not nearly enough pressure to pop that top off on a small engine like this. So yeah, so the whole thing can be 
disassembled and cleaned if need be. So, anyway, this is the new power plant I built for it. It has a different boiler on it, a horizontal internally fired boiler. The uh, prior boilers that I built were either of a uh, vertical boiler type with a wick burner like this that uses denatured alcohol. This has a little wick extender on it for increasing the, the size of the flame and the amount of the heat. And then this was another style boiler I built. Actually, there's a few more different styles that I have in my steamboat book. Um, but this is a horizontal boiler and it uses uh, sterno. sterno. This engine right here uh, uses a little butane torch. They're, uh, they're called, let me, let me zoom out here a little bit, or zoom in, pencil torch. Bought it at Menards. I think I only paid less than five bucks for it. And uh, so the burner is from the pencil torch and also the the little valve on the top, the little fill valve. This piece right here is nothing more than a half inch copper uh, elbow, or a copper T, copper water pipe T. Uh, I say it's an internally fired boiler. The stack comes off like that, and inside this little brass tank, uh, is soldered in um, this piece right here which takes the steam off from the top side of the boiler to minimize moisture and that piece of copper goes through that internally fired flue and then it comes out the top and then as you can see it hooks around and goes directly into the engine and then the, the stack is just notched to fit inside that, like that. The boiler has a wrap of gasket paper for insulation over the pressure vessel, and then uh, a very thin wrap of brass metal. Um, it's very thin and it wraps around. And then the boiler is attached to the uh, this rail with these little cradles and the straps that uh, attach to the cradles. So that's how the the boiler is held up from the from the rail so it's insulated on the sides but but not on the not on the back side and I will uh, run the engine now This is the, the cap for the, the fill pipe and also the safety valve, the pressure release. 
There's a little spring in there. And I set it with a bicycle tire pump for about uh, 10 PSI. This boiler produces steam at a pretty good rate, so when it gets hot, it'll run this little engine quite fast. Of course, when it's under a load, it doesn't run nearly as fast as when it's uh, running uh, without a load. Moisture is starting to come out of the exhaust. So the engine is warming up. You can hear the RPMs picking up. going to turn it down and I turned it down too much. 